Alrighty, everybody, for the first time in a long time, this video will be up before midnight. So, you know, College Bowl World Recap will be up before midnight for once. Isn't that great? We have a lot to cover here, so I'm just going to make this as sweet and simple as possible. I don't know what the thumbnail will be like. I'll pick a thumbnail, and, you know, it's not going to be probably for what the, um, the better games for the day. It's probably going to be a unpopular thumbnail just to just to get the magnitude of what has happened this weekend because a lot of things have happened this weekend and we'll get to all of these things you know in just a moment here so um, just to start my notes off here I do have you know Cincinnati and Coastal Carolina easily take care of their opponents in conference play Coastal Carolina was hitting hard against Arkansas State, though. They were hitting hard. Like, multiple Arkansas State players were getting injured. Cincinnati, on the other hand, they were e they easily took care of Temple, you know, 52-3. to And now Cincinnati's, you know, they're going to leap somewhere into the top. They're going to be in the top five, but who knows where in the top five. It looks like, you know, and we'll talk about these top five. 10 upsets in a moment. It looks like Cincinnati is going to be vaulting up to at least number 3. At least number 3 tomorrow when the rankings come out. Um, Arizona State, how about the Sun Devils? That defense, um, a lot of people were like, you know, they weren't really, a lot of people I have thought, you know, I saw from, you know, like Twitter reactions and stuff like that. A lot of people weren't very high on Arizona State. They proved us all wrong. Very dominant performance against Stanford. Ran the ball, you know, very efficiently. Stanford was committing turnovers like it was crazy. And it was just, it was just too easy for Jaden Daniels and her fighting Herm Edwards. So now the Sun Devils seem to be, you know, the team to beat in the Pac-12, you know. In the, now it seems like we're setting up an Oregon-Arizona State matchup, potentially. Or an Oregon State-Arizona State matchup, potentially, you know, down the line. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what these Pac-12 teams to do because Pac-12 is on life support. Remember, they're on life support. It's not over yet for Pac-12. Remember that. But again, the conference is on life support as far as their playoff hopes go. Let's move on to these new games because I, I'm gonna be real angry about one of these, and y'all already know which team I'm gonna be angry about. But first off, Florida. They easily take care of Vanderbilt. They shut them out. Um, good performance there. C.J. Stroud, you know, he's been throwing it up to the Ohio State wide receivers, and those wide receivers have been making plays. Stroud continues to keep going, improve, and this Ohio State team cooking with grease now that they dominated Maryland, too. And again, you know, a, a lot of people weren't going to be like, you know, I, I was one of those people that was going to be like, hey, Maryland could bounce back. You know, Maryland could make this a game, but that did not happen. Ohio State put up 66 on them. You know, 66 on them. And Michigan State, you know, they beat up on Rutgers. Remember when we thought Rutgers was at least decent enough? Man, Kenneth Walker ran for 200 yards. Jalen Naylor got 200 yards receiving and three touchdowns from Michigan State. And you already know Michigan State's about to vault into the top 10, so... um yeah, this Michigan State team is for real, for real, legitimate team. Um, Arkansas, Ole Miss, let's get to that. This was a thriller, over a thousand yards of offense. Matt Corral was slinging it. K.J. Jefferson was plaking plays. Both these teams combined for 600 yards rushing. There were four ties, what, five lead changes in the, in the late stages of this game. And it came down to a two-point conversion that Arkansas was unable to get just like that. A bad play call in the, in the late stages with no time left. And there you have it. Ole Miss beats Arkansas in a thriller. What a thrilling, thrilling game this was. And we got a second thriller. That's right. The Red River Shootout. You already know. You already know how angry I'm going to be because this... This should not have been close at all. In fact, you know, this should have been an easy, easy Texas victory. But you don't understand. This is Texas with the defense that is terrible we're talking about here. 
you know, Oklahoma's defense is also pretty bad for allowing 48 points like this. But Texas's defense completely imploded on itself. Up 28 to 7 at one point. That's the largest lead, you know, ever came back from in a Oklahoma Texas game in the history of this rivalry. Imploding. Spencer Rattler benched. Caleb Williams and Kennedy Brooks decided to run all over this Texas defense. He and Williams decided to run all over this Texas defense. All over it. You know, despite the fact that, you know, Worthy got 200 yards. Thompson threw five touchdowns. It wasn't enough. The Longhorns said, you know, Sark said, all gas, no brakes. We put the brakes on way too fast. You know, I thought this was going to be the breakout game, the the highest but defining moment for B. John Robinson, but instead, you know, B. John gets shut down in the second half, and that forced the Longhorns to have to throw the ball a lot more, and it, it obviously it worked, but, you know, there was just too many times where it felt like, you know, the Horns were not getting, you know, things done when they needed to get it done there. They just took their foot off the gas way too many times. The O-line is still a liability for both these teams. Both these teams have an O-line problem because both teams were getting, you know, getting much pressure, you know, especially in that first half on Rattler. You know, Longhorns were getting pressure over showing what's showing out. You know, yeah, I mean, this was just a crazy game. Oklahoma survives. You know, Kennedy Brooks runs in a touchdown with less than five seconds to go and beats Texas just like that pretty much cementing you know that you know first off that Oklahoma is 6-0 and that's the first thing and the second thing is that Texas still is not back yet they're not back yet again we kinda most people kinda knew this was going to be happening you know we just didn't know you know which games we were gonna lose yet and a lot of people are assuming that you know a lot of people were saying before the season, and I said this, you know, in my preseason top 25, but I said at least four losses. There's going to be at least four losses for this Texas team this year, and we already have two, so there may be two more coming up, you know, with Oklahoma State and Baylor looming. You know, both those teams are really, really good this year. You know, so Texas has to get together with that O-line, has to get it together, you know, playing a complete game because you can't play just the first half. You cannot play just the first half, you know, like that. Will these two teams meet again in December? I genuinely don't know. I really don't. Don't even ask me about that. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, Texas will be back in December. You cannot be sure of that until Texas improves what they need to improve. They're not going to the Big 12 Championship in December. And Oklahoma is still due for a loss. I'm still waiting on an Oklahoma loss, and I don't think we're going to get it for a while until they play Baylor and Oklahoma State. I don't think it's either going to be one of those two or some inexplicable loss, you know, and that goes for both Oklahoma and Texas. Oklahoma's, Texas is probably going to have another inexplicable loss somewhere, either next with Oklahoma State or somewhere after that. Oklahoma's due for a loss. We know this, you know, maybe, maybe Williams, you know, Caleb, Okay, well, Williams, you know, he goes out and starts playing like crazy. But, I mean, I, right at this moment, Oklahoma's 6 and out. That's all we can say, you know. That's all we can say right now is that Oklahoma is undefeated still in this league, you know. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a while, you know. You know, again, as I'm checking here, you know, they play TCU next Saturday night, you know, and, the, again, it won't be until November, at least, you know, for Oklahoma to get tested like this again because the rest of the Big 12 has not pulled their weight, you know, so far. All right, let's move on to these, um, you know, these mid-afternoon games here. Um, SMU, they survive against Navy. Again, like I said, that, that spread option is a problem. Spread option is a problem. We'll be talking about some other teams or at least, at least one other team, you know, eventually, I'm hoping to, based on the way things are playing out. When we talk about Air Force in the future, I guarantee you that, you know, SMU survives against Navy. They only win 31-24. They were down at one point. How about Wake Forest? 
Hartman got four touchdowns. They had to go to overtime with a, a tricky Syracuse. Again, this was a tricky Syracuse team, and Syracuse had the opportunities in regulation to win this game, but unfortunately, you know, Wake Forest was able to get a beautiful touchdown pass from Hartman in overtime to win, and Wake Forest is undefeated, and they have a big game in a couple weeks, which I don't think anybody is going to expect me to talk about. I'm going to talk about that game, again, involving an option team. Oh yes, we're going to be talking about Air Force and Army on this channel. Oh yes, it's going to be sweet. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, BYU, yes. How about them Cougars of BYU? Four turnovers against Boise State. Four turnovers. And despite the fact that Jaron Hall came back, you know, three bad fumbles. Three of those four turnovers were bad fumbles, just awful fumbles. And Boise State has become the giant killer again. Remember, this is not the same Boise State team, you know, that was knocking teams off left and right. This is a Boise State team that was under 500. And they were able to run the ball, you know, with both, with both their backs. You know, Van Buren was still there. Hank Bachmeyer, he didn't really do too much, you know. But Boise State was able to get what they needed to get. And that was those four turnovers that really helped them. And BYU, unfortunately for BYU, they're out of the, they're probably out of the New Year's Six race, unless, unless things go you know, a little bit crazy as we keep going throughout the season. But for right now, at least, f f more, more than likely, BYU is probably going to the Independence Bowl, which is what their bowl tie-in is. Still an exciting team. In fact, they still have a big matchup next week. So, you know, again, there's no reason to worry for BYU fans. You still have an opportunity to get to the top 10 and get yourself access to a New Year's Six Bowl. There's still time. Don't worry, this is a bet. This is a loss. This is a really, really rough loss. You know, a tough way to lose it because they mean they were up, they were up ten to nothing at one point, and then you know, Boise State started to say, "Hey, let's get the turnovers and let's get things going." You know, so BYU, don't worry about it. You guys still have plenty of opportunities, especially with a couple Pac-12 teams. You know, Virginia and Baylor coming up. There's still plenty of time. In this season, so don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. Okay, Georgia, they are probably going to be the number one team by tomorrow. Stetson Bennett, two passing touchdowns, and your white two touchdowns. They take care of Auburn. It wasn't a shutout, 34 to 10. You know, easily took care of that Auburn team. And now Auburn is probably tumbling. You know, hopefully, they tumble out the polls because I mean, there's no point in ranking Auburn. You know, again, the you know, I mean, a lot of people were going to be like, oh, well, yeah, that was kind of expected. Again, I thought Auburn would play it a little bit closer than this, but that just didn't happen. You know that Georgia defense has been elite this year, despite the fact that they've been losing guys left and right. Remember, I don't know I don't know what they've been beating the Georgia players, but the, the, that defense is still legit, despite the fact that Georgia has lost so many guys on the defensive side of the ball. And speaking of loss, you know, Sean Clifford, lost for the game against Iowa, Penn State versus Iowa, top four matchup, you know, a big time game, and despite the fact that, you know, Penn State was up 14 to 3 at half, Sean Clifford, you know, gone, you know, and I mean, he threw two interceptions before this, and if it weren't, you know, if it weren't for those two interceptions, you know, who knows? Who knows? A lot of people were like, during the game, probably after the game, oh, well, Penn State's going to easily take care of Iowa. You know, despite the fact that this is the same Iowa team that still picked off Clifford twice before he left the game. And it's unfortunate that Quan Roberson came in, you know, in this type of environment, in this type of situation. Again, you know, Iowa fans are, they, they were loud. They were rambunctious out there, you know, plethora of false start penalties against Penn State in the second half. Penn State didn't even have 100 yards. In fact, they had less than 70 yards in the second half. And two more picks by Roberson. And a huge play from Petrus, you know, late in the game. You know, a late touchdown by Petrus. And I, know I said Petrus last week. But a late touchdown in which Penn State did not defend the crossing route. Like, nobody was out there to defend that crossing route. And 
boom, there you have it. Iowa will be in the top two tomorrow. Iowa will be in the top two tomorrow. I can guarantee you that Iowa could run the table, in all honesty, with the way the Big Ten West is going. You know, and it's looking like, you know, that you all remember the year Michigan State made the playoff in which Iowa was undefeated. Yeah, this could be that type of this could be that type of Iowa team again this year, you know, with the way the West has looked, because it hasn't looked great. But we'll see what Iowa can do next week, and we'll see what Penn State can do now without Clifford. Who knows how long he'll be out. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a weird time for Penn State fans. They still have plenty of opportunities, though. You know, Roberson, if he's going to be continuing to start, you know, he'll hopefully continue to improve. You know, we'll talk about another guy who improved in a minute here. Um, but yeah. So unfortunate for Penn State, they were going to have to get it together. You know, there's still Michigan. There's still Ohio State. You know, there's still Michigan State coming up for the Nittany Lions. So, again, they're going to have to get it together. Speaking of Michigan, they survived against Nebraska. A game that was pretty ugly. You know, Nebraska was down, you know, 13 to nothing and a half. And as soon as the second half started, Nebraska finally decided to start playing football. And despite all that, Nebraska found a way to lose Martinez, but the fumble late. You know, they were having some late game mistakes, you know, just a plethora of late game mistakes by Nebraska that bailed Michigan out. Because, I mean, again, this is a Michigan team that has struggled at times when playing stiffer competition. You know, again, Rutgers, first example right there. They did not play well against Rutgers. They did not play well tonight against Nebraska. They did not play well at all. If it weren't for the costly mistakes, I guarantee you that Michigan would have a loss on their resume right now. But Michigan, instead, they survived. They continue to be undefeated. And the trajectory to the big matchup with Michigan, Michigan State in a couple weeks. Who boy. Who boy. Let me tell you, that is going to be one hell of a matchup. Going to be one hell of a matchup in a couple weeks. How about them Kentucky Wildcats? They're 6 0. Will Levis, three touchdowns. Passing, two on the ground. And with the backfield of Chris Rodriguez and and Cavosi Smoke, I almost said his name wrong. I might have said his name wrong. You know, that backfield, they, they were running all over the LSU Tigers. Running all over them. It was just too much, too much for LSU to overcome. And, you know, Kentucky able to take care of the Tigers heading into their big matchup with Georgia next week. My goodness, this is going to be one hell of a matchup next week. I'll talk all about the big matchups next week on Monday or Tuesday. You know. And, you know, San Diego State, I'll briefly talk about them. They easily take care of New Mexico to remain unbeaten. Again, I've been talking about the Mountain West, you know, a little bit more recently. Again, there's going to be some big matchups with San Diego State coming down the road. Again, Air Force, Wyoming, Fresno State. Mountain West is looking like a really interesting conference this year. So keep that in mind, y'all. Keep that in mind. There's probably going to be another ranked Mountain West team in there somewhere. You know, keep that in mind. Virginia Tech, on the other hand, I cannot keep Virginia Tech in mind. They blew it against Notre Dame. They had leads on multiple occasions against Notre Dame. And yet they fail. They fail to beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame ends up winning with a walk-off field goal and with another quarterback in, in Buchner, Buckner, Buchner, whatever his name is, however you say his name. I'm not good with names, remember that. Um, but yeah, Buchner, he's more of a running type quarterback and that's exactly what they did. You know, Jack Cone's still in there, he's still playing, but now it's a three quarterback system with Notre Dame, you know. You know, I guess Cone is the more balanced quarterback. Pine can throw it, and Buchner can run the ball. So now Notre Dame, they're winning games with three different quarterbacks under their name. It's kind of like, remember when Lamar Jackson was first at Louisville, you know, way back in 2015? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Where Louisville they used three quarterbacks that year. And I remember, I remember this very well because it was that first game against Auburn. This is, I think, this is what Notre Dame is setting up. And now Notre Dame 
you know, they still have positioning to where they can get themselves back into the college football playoff one because, I mean, top teams are going to start knocking each other off at Notre Dame if they continue to win, you know, are going to get themselves back into the hunt. That's just how it goes, you know. A lot of people are going to hate that, but that's just how it goes. And last, but certainly not least, is Zach Calzada shining shining performance 285 yards a couple of touchdowns you know two critical turnovers by Alabama a kick return touchdown by A&M and finally finally Alabama loses to an unranked opponent for the first time in a long time Nick Saban loses to one of his former assistants for the first time and Alabama will no longer be number one tomorrow they will not be the number one team in the country tomorrow I've said this I say it again, but Alabama is not the most dominant team in the country. I said this. I have said this for weeks, and I'm finally, I'm kind of glad, you know, that finally somebody did what they needed to do because Ole Miss should have did this last week, but instead, you know, they did not do that. And again, it starts with the run. You know, I'm gonna modify what I said because I said fully that it was the run defense defense for Alabama. That was not good. But Calzada came in and shined for nearly 300 yards, picked apart this Alabama defense, and Alabama's defense was getting injured, you know, left and right throughout the night. You know, both, I believe there was a targeting penalty at one point, too. Um, but yeah, in any case, Alabama was getting picked apart on defense, you know, again, the run sets up the pass, so that's exactly what Jimbo Fisher and company dialed up against, you know, the groups had died. And AM, you know, after two humiliating losses, we're talking, you know, a humiliating season so far for the Aggies, where they were basically nearly beaten by Colorado. They got beat by Arkansas and Mississippi State. They have the biggest win in the country by beating the number one team in the country. You know, we thought Oregon's win against Ohio State was the biggest win in the country. Now look at that. Oregon has lost once. AM may have lost twice, but again, you know, this is the biggest win of the season so far, and there may be another, you know, potential big win next week. Well, we'll talk about all these big matchups next week, but what I've taken away from this week, and I'll leave y'all with this, what I've taken away from this week is that it seems to be that Georgia is the best team in the country. I, I've i said it that Georgia should have been number one. We've all pretty much said it. A lot of people have said it, and I think that holds true. The ACC is going to be a dogfight. That's my second takeaway. The ACC is going to be a dogfight. We haven't even talked. I don't think I've mentioned Pittsburgh at all on here. and We're going we're gonna to eventually talk about them. You know, Virginia Tech, while not, while not a um, team that has, you know, won anything remotely good, you know, they have a big win against North Carolina that means nothing now. You know, again, Virginia Tech is still a good team. NC State, good team. Boston College, a good team that suffered a bad loss to Clemson. Wake Forest, undefeated. It's gonna be, it's gonna be weird for the ACC. They're gonna get, they might get somebody in. I, I guarantee you that Big Ten is going to cannibalize itself. That's my third takeaway. Big Ten will cannibalize itself. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to work out. But, again, all of the contenders, you know, except for maybe, well, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going to say Michigan State has no flaws. They do have flaws. I just haven't really seen them play yet. But Penn State has flaws. We know this because they lost already. Iowa has flaws still on the offensive side. You know, Petrus was able to, you know, throw the ball efficiently and stuff like that. But when Iowa gets stopped on offense, that's when things get rough for them. You know, the defense was able to bail them out. Elite defense by Iowa. You know, Ohio State, Stroud has came into his own. But I'm still kind of worried about that defense. You know, when they play better teams, I'm still kind of worried about them. Because Oregon, you know, and, uh, and again, last, uh, I'll mention you know Oregon and stuff in a second, but you know Ohio State has weaknesses. They've been exploited already. Michigan is a team that can't seem to you know keep a full game together. They uh, they I don't know if they can throw the ball very well. You know it seemed like they can at times, but you know 
for the most part, you know, trying to, you know, balance between, you know, the A&M and, and, and the game of Nebraska, you know, it felt like Michigan was just running the ball as usual the entire game. So, you know, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan State, and Ohio State, are go there's going to be some form of chaos with that group right there. And Iowa is waiting for them, you know, unless the Big Ten West decides to pull off an upset against Iowa. You know, unless somebody in the Big Ten West does. And it could be Nebraska, could be Purdue, could be somebody. We don't know yet. Could be Wisconsin. We don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, for the Big 12, the Big 12's playoff hopes lie in Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and yes, Baylor. Yes, Bohannon is a is a beast out there for the Baylor Bears. I'll tell you that right now. He's been playing beastly. I'll talk about him and the rest of the Bears next week. Or rather, on Tuesday, not next week. Um, but yeah, BYU, Baylor are going to be fun. You know, future Big 12 matchup right there. Texas is still in this thing, you know, for the Big 12 title at least. But you can, again, you could cross out their national title hopes right there. You know, it was a long shot anyway, at least in my opinion. But the but the Longhorn, but the Horns can still take a Big 12 championship, you know, if they can get things together. Again, all four of these Big 12 teams, Oklahoma State has had weaknesses, and I've highlighted those weaknesses. Baylor, I really haven't talked about Baylor at all, and we've talked about Oklahoma extensively on this channel. You know, again, all four of these teams have weaknesses, and it's going to be a dogfight. I tell you, it's going to be a dogfight this year in the Big 12. SEC. It's Georgia's to lose. It is Georgia's to lose. You know, if the, if Alabama, you know, somehow comes into the SEC championship, you know, with, you know, with just but that one loss to A&M, like like they usually do, one ex inexplicable loss, you know, it, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long season. I'll tell you that it's gonna be a long season for. You know, for the rest of the SEC, it's going to be a long season. For them. You know, maybe Kentucky can do something. Maybe Florida can do something. You know, a lot of people are still saying like Florida can do something to Georgia. You know, Florida can cause some damage to the Dogs. But from what we've seen, Auburn is not very good. LSU is not very good. Arkansas is going to have to go through the gauntlet of the SEC West, and it just hasn't worked out for them all that well yet. You know, playing both Georgia and now Ole Miss. You know, Ole Miss looking like a good team this year, a really good team. You know, again, that inexplicable last week for what happened with Lane Kiffin's play calling. It even happened today. You know, but again, Ole Miss is good. Texas A&M is in that weird position. LSU is not good. You know, again, so it's, it's, it's going to be a weird time in the SEC. Pac-12. Pac-12, again, I said it I said it earlier, Pac-12 is not dead yet. Arizona State has a loss to BYU. We know that. Oregon State has a loss to Purdue, I believe. Oregon has a loss to Stanford. Let's not completely count out the Pac-12 here, because chaos is continuing to brew like it's 2007 out here. So we'll see, you know, who in the Pac-12 can take control, who in the Pac-12 can... You know, establish momentum to where they can be the you know one lost Pac-12 team and puff their chests up against you know somebody from the other power conferences. And as far as teams like Cincinnati, Coastal Carolina, potentially you know teams from the Mountain West to go, you're rooting for chaos too. You know, Coastal Carolina apparently you know just doesn't have the schedule to make it out. You know, but Coastal could still get a New Year's Six bid, and Cincinnati looking for the playoff bid. You know, so hopefully both those teams keep the momentum up. You know, the Mountain West is looking really, really fun this year. I'm going to be talking. It seems like I'm going to be talking about a lot of Mountain West in these next couple weeks. And so you know, I'll, I'll tell you all about that very, very soon. But with that being said, everybody, this video is coming out in about 15 minutes or so. So. Y'all, take care. Have a good night. See you all Monday for the um, for the NFL, college football, you know, and and you know, get the, get the rest. Let's get the rest of the week, you know, or rather, let's get the new week started off right. Y'all, take care. Have a good night, and congrats to everybody who won today.